So yeah, go ahead and call ground. We have information. Uniform. Welcome uniform. Ground. Welcome to ground system 5150 Delta, executive with uniform, eastbound please. System 5150 Delta, we are in ground and a 28 right, thanks to you, Juliet, Hotel Alpha. 28 right, Juliet, Hotel Alpha, 5150 Delta. Great. Welcome to ground, Cessna 811 Sierra Golf, Executive Taxi Eastbound, Quebec. 811 Sierra Golf, Montgomery Ground, right, 28 right, Taxi Juliet, Hotel Alpha. Okay, I'm going to read back immediately. 28 right, Juliet, Hotel Alpha, 811 Sierra Golf. <laughs> What's up everyone, my name is Chance, I'm with Real Sim Gear, where we make flight simulation gear as real as it gets. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up Pilot Edge for X-Plane on Windows in five easy steps. For those of you that don't know, Pilot Edge is a realistic air traffic control service that connects you and your flight simulator to a real person on the other line, providing you clearances, traffic alerts, you also get the ability to talk to other pilots on the same server, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. One of the best features that Pilot Edge has is their CAT and I ratings. CAT stands for Communications and Airspace Training, and the I stands for IFR. These are straightforward step-by-step -step flight lessons that will help take your comms to a professional level, even if right now your radio call sounds something like this. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do it's also especially helpful to have a realistic way to interface with the cons panel of the airplane so that's why i highly recommend pairing your pilot edge subscription with our real sim gear gma audio panel or g1000 suite that way you can swap between the different comm channels adjust volume and tune into vors things like that so i'll be showing you how to do a radio check on the gma audio panel in step four but you could always just click the buttons in the simulator for now so let's get it downloaded and at the end of the video i'll walk you through how to get started with the cat ratings we're going to install pilot edge in five easy steps. Step one is to create a pilot edge account. Simply go to the website pilotedge.com and click on this join us button right here. This will bring you to a sign up page and you'll notice that you're going to get a free trial when signing up and you don't even need to put in a credit card or anything. They'll let you try it out for 14 days or five total hours, whichever comes first. But after that, you'll have to get one of their subscriptions. Like I said, I'm currently signed up for the LA Center plan as I don't need the Western expansion since I mainly fly GA in California. But you can click on their pricing and plans page under the about section and click on the these links right here to read more about them to figure out which one works best for you. Keep in mind that the CAT and I ratings are both done in the LA Center only plan. So if you plan on doing those, make sure you at least get this one. If not, get them both with the combined. And if you purchase it annually versus monthly, then you save a little bit of money throughout the year. Also, be sure when you sign up that you write down your login credentials as we need them when we log into Pilot Edge through X-Plane. After you're all signed up, it's time for step two, which is to download and install the Pilot Edge client. This is a software program that allows you to connect to the Pilot Edge network and interact with the air traffic controllers inside of X-Plane. You can download the client by going to the Pilot Edge website, hovering over the Pilot Center tab and clicking on this download software page. I would recommend coming back to this getting started page though. It's a nice overview of everything that Pilot Edge has to offer. So to get the most out of your free trial subscription, come back to this video after you watch this one and check this one out. Okay, so Pilot Center tab, click on download software and then under X-Plane, you're gonna see download or configuration instructions. We're gonna come back to configuration instructions once we have it downloaded, but for now we're just going to you click on download, that'll bring you to this page and you're gonna to wanna to click on the Pilot Edge zip folder right here. This next folder, this Microsoft C++ thing, is if you don't already have this on your computer. If you have a newer computer, it's probably already gonna be there. So you can just skip this part and go to the Pilot Edge download. But if for whatever reason it's not working, maybe come back to this and make sure you have the most up-to-date version of this. This last link right here is optional. It's if you want really high definition models of specific airplanes. Most of the general aviation airplanes are already included but if you want specific aircraft to have high definition models then you can download them from this link right here i'm just going to click on the pilot edge zip folder here that'll start a download here in the bottom left so once it's done downloading we'll need to unzip it and then place it into our plugins folder inside of our main x-plane folder so how do we do that? We'll click on this now that it's done downloading. That should bring up the folder that you just downloaded. If that download thing in the bottom doesn't populate or you lose it, you can always just go to the search bar here, type in file explorer. That'll bring up a new window. And then in the download section, it'll probably be the most recent thing that you've downloaded. Okay, so now we need to unzip this. I'll just exit out of the second one for now. It may pull up with you inside of the zipped folder already. So I'm just going to go back to my downloads and then click on the zipped folder itself. Now that I have it selected, I'll right click on it and click extract all. You can just extract this to the same downloads folder. It's fine. We're going to move it in a second anyway. So I'll just select extract. Now it's pulling everything out of that folder in a non-compressed version. So we can then place that into the X-Planes folder. 
Okay, now that I have this unzipped folder right here, I wanna bring up a second window of the file explorer so it's a lot easier for me to drag and drop this into my Xplane folder. You can either go down here to the file explorer and open it there. You might have another tab that you can right click on and then click on file explorer and that'll pull it up too. And so I'll just kind of resize these so it's a lot easier for me to drag and drop. Now I'll find my Xplane folder, which for me, it's in my local disk C under this Xplane 11 folder here. So we'll open that up. I'll click on resources and plugins. And then now all I have to do is drag this piled edge folder over to this folder and I'll drop it in there and boom, nailed it. Now it's time to open Xplane and move on to step three, which is to connect to the piled edge network. Before connecting to Pilot Edge, you need to load into Xplane with your desired airplane. Be sure you don't load onto a runway or a taxiway or in someone's airspace. So when you click on new flight right here, come over to this location section and click on customize. That'll allow you to select where on the runway that you load up. And so you can click right here, click right here. If it has you maybe starting in the air, you might need to click this runway button so you don't start on a runway. Click over to ramp. And then I recommend selecting something that's close to a taxiway or close to a runway runway if you don't already have somewhere that you start from at your real airport. Okay, I'll click on confirm. And if I don't need to change the weather or the time of day, I got my Cessna selected and I'll click start flight. Okay, now that we're loaded in to connect to the Pilot Edge network, you need to come up here to the top left menu where it says plugins, click on that. And then if you see this Pilot Edge section right here, then you've downloaded it correctly. If not, go back and repeat step two. Then I'm just gonna click on connect. And now we need to refer back to those configuration instructions that we saw when we clicked on the download software page. Pro tip, I like to hold alt and then hit or hold tab to see all the windows that I have currently up. So now that we're back on the Pilot Edge website, you can click back and configurations instructions, or again, it's under the Pilot Center tab and click on download software. That'll bring you to here as well. Remember, I told you to write down your login credentials because we got to put those in again, and then we're going to make a call sign and put in our type code and then connect, okay? And so if you're running into issues at all, come back to this page, maybe read through it a little more, but it's pretty straightforward. So I'll do my alt tab, come back to X plane, and now I'm going to put in my credentials. Okay, then you're going to make up a call sign. This is going to be your tail number. Tail numbers in the United States always start with the letter N as in November and typically have three numbers followed by two letters. Or you'll also see four numbers in one letter or some completely different variations. This is totally up to you. Just keep in mind you have to say this frequently when making radio calls. So don't pick something hard to say like 010 Sierra Sierra because when abbreviating the last three, it sounds like zero Sierra Sierra and that just sounds crazy to me. So try to make it something that rolls off the tongue. I'm going to make mine 811 Sierra Golf. Make sure you put the November there. 811 Sierra Golf for Sim Gear. Okay, and now for the type code, you want to use actual iCal coding for the type of aircraft. And here are a list of a few common general aviation airplanes and their type codes, or there's a link back on that configurations instruction page so you can search for your specific aircraft. The type code is important for ATC to know because they make decisions when separating aircrafts based on your performance, meaning a Cessna 172 and a PA 42, if they're approaching at the same time, the PA 42 is faster and the ATC is probably going to let that airplane go first. I'm flying a Cessna 172, so I'm going to make sure I put C172 here in the type code. And unless you know what to put there on the airline or the livery, just leave them how they are. Now we finally get to hit connect and you should hear this. Connected to pilot etch. Now it's time for step four, which is to perform a radio check so you can make sure that all of your volume settings are correctly tuned. For that, I'm going to be using our GMA audio panel, which is attached to our Real Sim Gear Yoke Top package. But before we do that, let's adjust the sound settings by hovering your mouse over this top right menu here and click on this little EQ bar right here. We'll scroll over to sound and then you're going to want to drag your radio volume pretty much to 50 to 60 percent for whatever reason it comes out really loud so you just want to turn it down and as you fly and develop your preference you can adjust the aircraft exterior and interior sound i have them pretty turned down right now just for the purpose of this video but maybe normally they're about 40 percent or so all right after i adjust all that i'll just select done then we want to make sure that we have our desired button for push to talk mapped correctly. You can set any button on your keyboard to contact air traffic control. I believe it defaults to the enter button that's not on the number pad, but I currently have this yoke top package that's mounted on top of a honeycomb yoke, and I want the push to talk button to be this top left button right here on the left side of the yoke. I think normally it defaults to this top white one, but there's this other button you can't see that's on the back left right here. So I think that's just a more comfortable position to sit there and contact air traffic control. So to do that, I'll 
go to the menu system here and I'll click on the EQ button again. And then I'll click on joystick. And I want to just make sure that the button I press says contact ATC. So this button says that right there, number three. So I'm gonna make sure the button I assigned or whatever it defaults to is the button that I want it to be. Let's say I wanted it to be this top button right here that currently is assigned to nothing. I could edit this one and just type in do nothing and have it default to nothing again and then hit edit here and type in contact ATC and that would pull it right up and then I would just click apply. Okay, now that that's finished, I'm just gonna click on done. And now we need to be sure that we have our input and audio devices set up correctly. You can use basically any gaming headset with a built-in microphone. They don't recommend a Bluetooth headset for some reason, but if that's all you have, then try it. I'm currently using a general aviation headset that I actually fly with using an adapter to connect it to my PC, which I'll link below. You don't need to do it this way as using my Bose A20s are completely overkill but if you're in the market for a headset anyway, it might be a good idea. I'd recommend grabbing some of the David Clarks. I used those for five years before upgrading to the A20s and they're pretty robust. Okay, so to select the proper input and output, I'm just gonna go up to this top left menu here where we clicked on it before for plugins. I'll click on Pilot Edge and then I'll scroll over to Preferences and click that. Now I have a few different inputs and a few different outputs. My Bose A20s are connected to the computer via a USB adapter. So if that happens to be this one, I have it on both the input and the output so I can hear and speak through the headset. And if that looks good, I'm just gonna click OK. And now it's finally time to do a self radio check. I'm gonna set both the active comm channels to one, two, three, four, five, or what's commonly referred to as fingers. And then I'll make sure that I'm monitoring on both comm one and comm two. So how do you do that? I'll zoom in on the comments panel right here. That way you can see how to do it in the simulator. So essentially the top row is for monitoring and the bottom row is for transmitting where it says mic. And so if I hit the mic two button, I'll completely swap over to COM2. So right now I'm monitoring and transmitting over COM2. And if I go back, I'm monitoring and transmitting only on COM1. But we want to listen to both or monitor both COM channels. And so I'm just gonna hit the top row. That way I will listen to or be monitoring both COM1 and COM2, but only be transmitting over COM1. Now that I have that set up correctly, I need to dial in the radio check frequency and Pilot Edge recommends that fingers channel. So I'll just take this and I'll dial over to 123.45. There you go, swap. And then I'll do the same here, 123. And you can see it happening on the sim there, 0.45 and swap. Now all that's left to do is just simply press your contact ATC button and say radio check. Technically the right way to do a radio check at the rail airport is to say your tail number and then the phrase radio check. That way air traffic control can respond directly to you and let you know how they hear you. But at Pilot Edge, we're not talking to air traffic controller, we're just talking to ourselves so we can just say whatever we want. Radio, radio check. check. November 811 radio, radio check. Zero, zero. Radio, radio check. check. Zero. Zero. Okay, I can hear myself through my headset and the volume sounds pretty good. So let's move on to the final step, which is step five to turn off AI traffic. Pilot Edge already injects all of the traffic that you're going to see in the network. So we wanna turn off all the random X-Plane ones so they don't interfere. So I'll go up to the top right menu here and I'll click on the aircraft. And then this AI aircraft button is right here. We're gonna click on that and disable it. If it's already turned off for you, you may have to disconnect from Pilot Edge to ensure that it's turned off and then reconnect. So I'm just gonna click on it and then I'm just gonna make sure that there are no aircraft in here. And if you add anything, you can just hit this little X right here to turn it off and then we'll click done. Apply changes. Once you completed all these steps, you should be ready to start flying, but I want to talk to you a bit about the ratings that Pilotage has to offer, and you want to take advantage of these to get the most out of your subscription or trial. I would say that the number one thing that I'm thinking of when I'm flying is how can I make the air traffic controller's job easier? There are many tricks of the trade with this one that you just learned over time, but to get a leg up on this important skill, we really recommend taking the CAT and I rating seriously. So let me show you where you can find them. For the main page, just hover over Pilot Center and you can select CAT ratings for VFR training and I ratings for IFR training. And so if you're a beginner, just start off with the CAT ratings. So we'll select that. And here you'll see the order of how this is going to teach you to not only communicate properly, but also do a little bit of navigating as well. You'll start off with some non-towered airports, move on to towered airports, airspace transitions, and so on. 
and you won't be able to move on to the next lesson until you test out of the previous. So make sure you read this entire taking the test page and practical test standards page. Since you're gonna wanna make sure that you get credit for the previous lesson because you won't be able to move on without it. It basically involves telling the controller that you'd like to test out of oh, CAT04 and getting approval from the controller before moving on or logging off. Same story with the I ratings. And once you get through all that, if you're hungry for more, they have this super cool thing called Sky High Charters, which is essentially a monthly workout program for IFR pilots where they give you different scenarios to fly as if you were working for a Part 135 commercial operator called Sky High Charters. I'm personally really excited to go through all these ratings and I'll be sure to film me going through them. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch when we upload this. I hope this video made it seem a little less daunting of a task to get started working the radios with Pilot Edge. It's pretty easy to see how amazing of a tool it can be. It will without a doubt help you learn how to speak to air traffic control or stay proficient if weather or life gets in the way of you flying consistently. We'd love it if you tagged us in any of your Pilot Edge videos on Instagram. I always love seeing videos and comments about some of the funniest moments people have had using Pilot Edge. So let me see those down below if you have any good stories. But that's all for now. Let us know if you need anything else and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.